All right, we are here today to talk about aluminum processing. So, we're going to start at the beginning, which is over here. So, the first thing you're going to need to do, which you should have already done for the tungsten processing, I'll put a link to the tutorial for that in the box in the corner here. But you should already have a electrolyzer set up, which in this case needs to be with salt. So take out this electro tag and it will run with salt to make sodium hydroxide. Now I don't need any more sodium hydroxide anymore, so I'm just running it off of. Uh, the selector tag so I just get hydrogen and oxygen but you will need this for the sodium hydroxide you can also do potassium hydroxide if you run rock salt instead of regular salt both salts rock and regular can be found as a stone layer in GT6 world gen so it's very easy to get just look for a blue or pinkish colored rock not this stuff all right so next you are going to need an autoclave a bath and a smelter now this is why we use why we set up tungsten processing before aluminum is for the smelter now it can be done with a crucible and a mixing cup but who wants to go through all that nonsense when you can literally just set up three machines and have your tungsten done this is a non-linear linear thing it's not like gt5 don't have to have aluminum and titanium before you get to tungsten tungsten will come before both of those so, I digress back to our tutorial. So, autoclave. You will put bauxite and sodium hydroxide or potassium. Whenever I say sodium hydroxide, know that potassium will also work. Then I'll stop having to repeat that. So, bauxite, sodium hydroxide, and if we hit U here on the bauxite, you will see that you get your uh, let's get to the actual sodium one you will get sodium aluminate or potassium aluminate along with a 50 percent chance at two refined ilmenite ore and 50 percent chance at one refined rutile ore along with some distilled water the distilled water is the uh, water from the steam along with some of it that comes out of the bauxite itself so there will be more distilled water than what can be used over here if memory serves because I have it set up to an actual water line instead of using the still distilled that comes out of it here the distilled is running in to take care of the boilers need and then any excess is going to our distilled over there for whatever we need around the rest of the base so autoclave i find that the lead boiler or invar boiler because they are identical work best for this because they are slow now you want to run an invar burning box instead of a lead burning box because the lead burning box is 16 heat units at 50 percent efficiency where the invar is 16 heat units at a hundred percent efficiency so say it took eight coal to run the lead one it's only going to take four to run the invar one for the same amount of heat 
So you definitely want to save your fuel, no matter if it's fluids, gases, or solids. Run Invar. So we that is why we have Invar and lead. And this can run literally days before it actually starts to overpressure because this has a huge tank in it. So you will want to set up a giveaway meter, which for this is 81. And then that just runs to a shutoff that'll put a block in front of the burning box and shut it off. There's no power that's needed to be run for the autoclave. It just runs off the steam. So then the output comes here, which has this pipes running into the bath and then this one running down here. So what can go in here is the sodium illuminate that we got out. The rutile and the illuminate cannot. So then it has to go down here to this chest. And because Greg's system of pipes does first closest uh, destination, the sodium illuminate will always try to go in the bath first. So as long as it can go there, it has room to do it, which the autoclave runs way slower than what the bath does. It should always have that as its destination for it. And then these will come down here, which can be automated over to a shredder to turn into dust. Now, in the bath, the sodium illuminate will turn into aluminum hydroxide and sodium hydroxide again. So, with that, we have a restrictor pipe here that allows only the aluminum hydroxide to come into this chest. What the restrictor pipe does is it makes the amount of steps it takes to get from here to there about a hundred times further than a regular pipe. So since we don't have over a hundred pipes here, it will see the autoclave as the destination. So the sodium hydroxide will go up over and back in. It is a closed loop. We have about nine of them in the system and that is all it's ever going to need. It'll just continue to loop infinitely. And then the aluminum hydroxide comes over here. And this is what we need to make our alumnia. So it just melts it down, kicks it out into a mold, Hopper picks it up and puts it into our alumnia ingots. And that is what we need over here. So first off, once you get your alumnia made, then you need to start making all the acids that are needed. So let me throw this in here for a second. What you need to make aluminum is molten cryolite, molten aluminum fluoride, some kind of carbon. You can use coal, coal coke, charcoal, graphite, or carbon itself. And alumnia ingots and that will make your aluminum I'll show you here there is your recipe uh, let's get a full dust there we go so it only uses two liters of the cryolite and four liters of the aluminum hide the aluminum fluorite fluoride and you get four aluminum dust so you're gonna make a whole lot of aluminum off of one process of cryolite and aluminum fluoride. So let's go back to the beginning. First off, you're going to need sulfuric acid. 
in a mixer with some type of fluorite. There are plenty of different colors. None of the colors matter. So just throw it in here. And that is going to make you calcium sulfate and hydrogen fluoride. Now remember these are all acids so you're going to want to use stainless steel pipes and I will show you the piping system when we get all done here. So the calcium sulfate just goes in a box and then the um, hydrogen fluoride is going to go into these two mixers. This one is going to make the cryolite with sodium hydroxide again. So if you look here and we find the one with, there we go, sodium hydroxide, alumnia, which can be in ingot form, will give us cryolite and water as its output. So you'll see you get 2880 liters from one process and you only need two for every process to make four aluminum aluminum so if we divide that by two that would be 1440 processes times the four aluminum you're going to get out of each process you're looking at more than 4,000 aluminum you can make from one run of this. So don't worry that you don't have a whole lot of fluoride in the beginning. You don't need a whole lot. So next, that needs to get pumped out and into the electrolyzer. Again, I'll show that in a second. And then the next one, sorry about the mess here, is this one, which is going to use sodium hydroxide, or, sorry, silicon dioxide, which can be any kind of quartz, or what we are using here, flint dust from all the flint tools that we broke in our early game that we saved up because flint dust is sodium or silicon dioxide and you can actually use silicon dioxide itself what really comes in handy is the pink quartzite rock you can just throw that in a shredder and it turns into um, quartzite dust which is silicon dioxide Anyways, that is going to make you hexafluorosalactic acid and water. And that acid needs to come over into this mixer. And then it will be mixed with the alumnia. Again, in ingot form, so you don't ever have to break down your alumnia to dust. And that will give us aluminum fluoride and water. And then this just needs to be put into a smelter to make molten aluminum fluoride. And that is what's needed to make the aluminum. So we have this smelter here, which has the dust come in through that pipe, the fluid come out through that pipe, and into the back. So that is how you make your aluminum. Now, for how we make all the things around here work. And then we'll get into what to do with the output. So we have mixers. Now we're running on GT6U. So we have these nice gas turbines. If you're running GT6 or if you haven't found natural gas, or don't want to use natural gas you can also use a steam turbine and a bronze burning box and bronze boiler to run this as well all of your mixing recipes are 16 RU 
So we just chose to do gas turbines for testing purposes here. And it's actually easier to set up than a whole lot of burning boxes and steam turbines. But we have our input here. Our solid output comes here. And then the output is through the back. Top is for the input of fluid. So the sulfuric acid is coming in through the top. Then our hydrogen um, fluoride comes out the back. We have that running into these first two mixers from the top. Now on the back, what we did is we have nanupal fluid pipes. Nanupal because they are cheaper than quadruple. Unless you need the higher per pipe bandwidth of the nanuple of the quadruple, I would always use nanuple, even if you're only doing two or three fluids, because it only is nine units to make a nanuple, where it is 12 units to make the quadruple due to the size of pipe that make them. And then we have. A filter here which you will have to do some manual um, fudging around for your first bit of aluminum to be able to make the filter it takes aluminum but we have a filter here that sends the water down to the bottom to be wasted and then a filter here for the cryolite that sends it through this pipe and over to that extender that is on the electrolyzer. Then this one has a filter for the hexafluorosalactic acid. And again, the water out the bottom. That acid comes in the top of this one. Water again, waste out the bottom to be disposed of. Then over here. On our electrolyzer, we have a inventory and tank extender. I could have just done a tank extender, um, but I have, wasn't exactly positive how I was doing it when I first made it. So I figured, yeah, we'll make this one and it'll work if I decide I want to put it on the top. Because you could put it up here where this chest is, use a hopper to do the input and put the fluids and the items in the top but since I could put it in the back I chose to do it this way I could have also used a quadruple or nanopole pipe but I don't want sloshing of this running back towards the mixer or that running back towards here so that's the great thing about extenders is it will force the fluid that comes in to go in one direction. It will never be able to come across to this pipe. So that is how we are putting both fluids into the electrolyzer. The electrolyzer needs power from the bottom, so LV Dynamo. And again, we're just using the bronze gas turbine but you could use a bronze steam turbine and we started out with uh coal coke or charcoal for our carbon but now that we actually have this set up the uh, let's see if we can find the electrolyzer for this recipe there we go. So you actually get CO2 gas out of making your aluminum. So we then run that into an electrolyzer to get oxygen and gas or oxygen and carbon. So that is what this electrolyzer is for, is for separating the CO2 into carbon and oxygen. 
And for this one, it's a 42 RU. So you need a steel turbine for it. LV Dynamo is still fine. And then we have this pipe that runs the carbon back into this chest up here to go right back into making more aluminum. And we have made way more aluminum than this. We have made thousands of it and we've only had it set up for a few days of actual messing with it. So that is aluminum. The only thing you're going to have to deal with after that is the fluorine that comes out which can be mixed back into making fluorite with some calcium or it can be turned if I remember correctly directly into the uh, let's see here so fluorine with one aluminum dust will make you four aluminum hydroxyfluoride which again that four is if I remember correctly four times 144 it's going to be like 500 and something and you only need four per to get four out so you can easily run this and just recycle it back around or can also if you need the other stuff if I can hit the right button here you can also mix it with calcium to give you fluorite which has no color you can mix it with uranium tetrafluoride for uranium processing so you might want to save it some of it for that but you can also mix it directly with hydrogen and make your hydrogen fluoride that you need for the hexosalactic acid and the cryolite right now we're just putting it in the tank because you get all very little of it for every process back and we will decide what we're going to do with it, probably saving most of it for uranium processing down the line. But that's it. That's aluminum processing. I hope that was not too long for you. And I hope it gave you all the information you need to be able to go ahead and make aluminum yourself. If you have any questions, though, feel free to ask in the comments down below or stop into our discord which the link for that is down below and i will see you guys next time